Hello friends, I am back with another video and this video is uh, related to the all the reasoning questions which are very important for the upcoming class 10 chemistry examinations scheduled for 13th May 2022. So without wasting any time, let me share the screen and let's see that what are the reasoning questions which are expected. Here it goes. Now in this uh, reasoning questions, we have covered the all the important questions which have been asked in the previous years of the board examination. So I hope it will be helpful for you all. And here it goes. Let's start with study of compounds, uh, nitric acid. So nitric acid, the first reasoning question, uh, question statement can be, the complete apparatus is made up of glass only. Reason being, the vapors of nitric acid are highly corrosive and easily attack rubber, cork, etc. And that is the reason why the apparatus is made up of glass. Then the second one is high temperature that is above 200 degrees centigrade are not used. Reason being, they may cause the damage to the glass apparatus can cause further decomposition of nitric acid and formation of a hard crust of the corresponding sulfate can occur, which cannot be easily removed from the apparatus as it will stick to the glass. The third one is conch nitric acid appears yellow when it is left standing in a glass bottle. If you have visited the chemistry lab, you might have found that on the seat where all the acids are placed, you will find that one of the bottle has got a yellow color liquid. That is not a yellow color liquid. It was transparent. It is called nitric acid. But the decomposition of nitric acid occurs while standing for a long duration being kept. And due to this decomposition, a reddish brown gas that is nitrogen dioxide is evolved which remains dissolved in the acid because the reagent bottles are closed. So the gas cannot escape, thereby imparting the color to it. The reaction also they might ask that nitric acid, if we take four moles of nitric acid on decomposition, it gives four moles of nitrogen dioxide gas, two moles of water and one mole of oxygen. Now children, balancing is very important. Please remember that in ICSC they, or it is ISC, Whichever uh, board you take, when it comes for the chemistry paper marking, the first thing which the examiner looks is for the balanced reactions. So just see that if you are writing the reaction, your reaction is completely balanced. Fourth one can be nitric acid stains the skin yellow if it is accidentally falls on it. Reason being that our skin contains this upper layer of the skin, it contains the protein. And when the nitric acid accidentally falls, maybe the fingertips, when we are holding the test tube, or we are transferring the acid from the reagent bottle, if accidentally our skin comes in contact with nitric acid, then what happens? It combines with the protein of the skin, forming a yellow compound, xanthoprotic acid, and hence this stains the skin yellow in color. The next one is, Distillation or boiling cannot be used to concentrate nitric acid beyond a certain concentration. Reason being that it forms a constant boiling mixture. The optimum temperature at which this boiling mixture forms is 121 degrees centigrade and contains 68% of the acid. As the above mixture on continuous boiling evolves the vapors of both acid and water in the same proportion as in the liquid. So the comp the Concentration becomes constant. That is the reason. Then nitric acid finds application in the purification of gold. This is something very important. Aqua regia, your conch nitric acid and uh, conch HCl, they are mixed together in the ratio of 1 is to 3. They form a solution which is called aqua regia. And this aqua regia has the tendency to dissolve all the noble metals. The gold is one of the noble metals. So it dissolves gold as nitric acid being an oxidizing agent. It oxidizes hydrochloric acid, 
to nascent chlorine. And this nascent chlorine combines with gold and forms a soluble chloride. So this is the reason why the nitric acid finds the application in the purification of gold because the gold forms a soluble uh, auric chloride, gold chloride, and the impurities, they remain insoluble. So through filtration, we are able to separate the impurities and the gold particles. Then the next compound, which is in our syllabus is hydrogen chloride gas and hydrochloric acid. The one reason which is very often asked in the water paper is HCl gas is not collected over water. The reason being it is highly soluble in water. Then quick lime or P2O5 phosphorus pentoxide are not used as drying agent. The reason being they react with HCl gas forming the respective chloride. Therefore, they cannot be used as drying agent. Third one, HCl acid is not prepared by direct absorption of HCl gas in water because it causes back section of water. This is the reason. And the problem to this reason is our funnel arrangement, which you might have prepared. It is, again, one of the important questions for the board. HCl gas fumes in moist air. Because it is highly soluble in water, therefore HCl gas in moist air, it forms a mist of droplets of HCl acid. Metallic chloride preferred for the use is NaCl in the lab prep, uh, preparation of HCl gas. Why? Because it is cheap and easily available. Your NaCl is nothing but it is your sodium chloride. The salt we all eat. It is not a very expensive thing and it is easily available. Anyways, that is your NaCl. That is pure NaCl which we are talking about in the lab. And the salt which we eat, that is your iodized. So please don't do a mistake of tasting any seal of the lab, thinking that, yes, it is also a common salt. So jokes apart, your next statement is dry HCl gas is collected by the upward displacement of air. Reason being, it is heavier than air. HCl acid is used in the pickling of metals. Pickling is again a technical term. HCl acid dissolves a metallic oxide coating on the surface of the metal, thereby cleans the surface. And this cleaning of the metallic surface, this is called your pickling of the metals. Then your next one is ammonia. Your first uh, statement is ammonia gas is not collected over water because ammonia is highly soluble in water. Then ammonia gas is collected by the downward displacement of air. Reason being, it is lighter than air. Third one, an optimum temperature of 450 to 500 degrees centigrade is used in the Haber's process. I hope you all have prepared all the three manufacture processes of these compounds. Like for ammonia, the manufacture process, the name is Haber's process. For nitric acid, it is a small process. And for sulfuric acid, it is contact process. These all manufacture processes are very important. Coming back to this statement, the reason is if the temperature is low, the speed of the reaction becomes slow and the yield of ammonia becomes low. And if the yield of the product required will become low, so it will not solve the purpose. And above this temperature, if we take the ammonia may decompose to give nitrogen and hydrogen. So an optimum temperature of 450 to 500 degrees centigrade is used. Then the fourth one, the aqueous solution of ammonia is a weak base. You all have done study of acid bases and compounds for semester one. So it is a weak base because it undergoes a partial dissociation in aqueous solution to give hydroxyl ions in low concentration. And since the concentration of hydroxyl ions is low in the solution, therefore it is considered to be a weak base. The next is your sulfuric acid. The first one is vanadium pentoxide is preferred as a catalyst during the catalytic oxidation of sulfur dioxide. The reason being it is cheap and le less easily poisoned or susceptible to impurities. So it solves our purpose. Second one, sulfuric acid is kept in airtight bottles. Again, in semester one, we have done deliquous and cyclostopic substances, though early, earlier it was there in the syllabus, then it was reduced in the reduced syllabus, it was removed. But then it has been done with the students because without this concept, we cannot for move forward. So it is hygroscopic in nature and hence absorbs moisture from the atmosphere. The third one, dilution of concentrated acid is done only by addition of acid to water. Now, this is very important, children. 
your acid is added to water in dilution not water to acid if you will add water to acid the same thing will happen as it's a practical thing which you can do in the kitchen that you heat the empty pan and sprinkle water on it it will at once put why because the surface is very very hot and lot of steam will be liberated so here it can be risky because here we are not saying water the moment you are adding what there to it is a pan but here if you are adding water to the acid then the acid will spurt and it can and sulfuric acid is a very dangerous acid it is a very strong acid so it can cause severe burns and blisters therefore in while diluting the concentrated sulfuric acid the acid is added to the water now let's see the reason the water being in bulk and the acid being heavier settles down and helps in the distribution of the heat evolved itself and hence the spurting of the acid is minimized so the all the acid gets settled down at the bottom and therefore the heat is evolved but then it is distributed so there is a less chance of spurting of the acid and causing any accident sulfuric acid forms two types of salts when treated with an alkali the reason being it dissociates in aqueous solution to give two hydrogen ions per molecule of the acid Yes, the formula for sulfuric acid is H2SO4. It is a dibasic acid. Therefore, it has two replaceable H plus ions, and it forms two salts. If I uh, talk about the salt for sodium with respect to sulfuric acid, it can be NaHSO4, sodium bisulfate, or sodium hydrogen sulfate, as you name it. Now, and the second one will be Na2SO4, sodium sulfate. So this is all about study of compounds. then certain important uh, reasoning for the metallurgy this is also very important let's see now in the reasoning it is first one is the fused cryolite and fluorspar are added to the electrolytic mixture reason being the cryolite lowers the fusion temperature and fluorspar and cryolite act as solvent for the electrolyte mixture and increases the electrical conductivity since pure alumina is almost a non conductor of electricity therefore to enhance the uh, electrical conductivity we take this electrolytic mixture and as it has been said to lower the fusion temperature then the powdered coke is sprinkled over the surface of the electrolytic mixture why because it reduces the heat loss by radiation and prevents the burning of anode third one the graphite anodes are continuously play replaced during the electrolysis reason being the oxygen gas evolved at anode escapes as a gas or reacts with carbon anode the carbon anode is thus oxidized the carbon anode is hence consumed and renewed periodically after a certain period of usage so it has to be removed on a regular basis then the next one is fused alumina is electro electrolytically reduced to aluminium reason being alumina is highly stable oxide and aluminum has a strong affinity for oxygen so these are the some very important reasoning part i hope i have covered the maximum as i said you are always welcome to join my online tutoring classes i have mentioned in the beginning the details so chemistry tutor is always there to help out if anybody has got any doubts in the concepts related to chemistry be it any level so with this i end the session and best of luck for the upcoming semester 2 chemistry examinations thank you